Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inizor Education. I would like to continue talking about um, electricity. Um, the previous lecture, we were, uh, in, uh, in the previous lecture, we were talking about what exactly is the carrier of electricity, and it's electron. Uh, and electrons can be in excess of the same number as protons are, or can be in deficiency. In which case, we will have negative or positive electric charge. Question is right now, in this particular lecture, how to measure electric charge. So we know about it ex its existence, it's based on certain excess or deficiency of electrons, but now we would like to measure it. Okay, now this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teens and it's presented on unizor.com. I do recommend you to watch this lecture um, from the website, uh, because every lecture, including this one, has detailed um, notes, and notes can, can be, in some cases, a little bit more detailed than whatever I'm talking about. Um, also, the website has um, exams, in many cases, um, and it's completely free, no advertisements, nothing, so I think it's much better to use the the website and besides it's it's a course so if you just found one lecture it's one lecture but on the website you will find the course which means it has certain sequence of um, uh, offering certain information which is related to each other one lecture is obviously based on another and as I was just talking about right now this lecture is based on the previous one the previous one we were explaining what electrons actually are doing they're carrying the electricity and now we were talking about how to measure it. Okay, so how to measure the amount of electricity, electric charge, how to measure amount of electric charge. Well, let me start from the end, <laughs> if I may. Right now, with all the knowledge which we have right now, um, especially the fact that it's electrons which are carrying um, electric charge, and they may be in excess or in deficiency, which makes negative or positive electric charge. What's the what's the most natural, I would say, way to to measure electric charge, but just to count number of electrons? I mean, certain electrons are in excess of number of protons, and this excess of electrons, the number of these electrons is a very good a quantitative characteristic of the charge. Or, if it's a deficiency of electrons with positive charge, obviously the number of electrons which are deficient, which are less than the number of protons in the atoms of this object, basically gives you exact number of, exact amount, uh, measure, if you wish, of the positive charge. Well, what's the problem with this? Well, obvious problem is that electrons are very, very small, and it's kind of difficult to, to, to measure something in such a very, very small uh, quantities, because the numbers which we will be dealing with in normal physical experiments or life, if you wish, uh, these numbers will be really huge. So, instead of using the amount of electricity in one electron as the unit, uh, physicists have decided to use the bigger unit, proportionally bigger, which is called Coulomb, Coulomb. well it's a French word and uh, different in different places it's pronounced differently I think British is more like Coulomb, in, in America is more Coulomb, but whatever it is doesn't really matter. This is the unit which physicists have decided to use, and in this a much larger unit than the charge of one particular electron. One electron has a charge something like 6, 0, blah, blah, blah. The number, exact number is, by the way, in the notes for this lecture, there are many, many different um, digits after the decimal point times 10 to minus 19 Coulomb. So this is a charge of one electron. 
So basically, it's like a definition right now. So Coulomb is amount of electricity. Uh, uh, is such a unit of uh, amount of electricity that the amount of electricity in one electron is this particular number of coulombs, which is very, very small. You see, 10 to the minus 19. Well, natural, uh, natural progression of this is the question, okay, how many electrons do we need to amount into one coulomb? Well, you just have to, to do the re reciprocal number. So you, if you will have 1 over this 1.6 blah 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 times 10 to the minus 19, you will have something like what 0 0.6 10 to the 19 or 6 to the 10 to 18. doesn't really matter. This is the number of electrons which combined together um, have the charge of one coulomb. Again, it's obviously a very big number. Um, and um, what's basically interesting about the whole measuring of electric charge is that this type of a definition, which from contemporary viewpoint seems the most natural, I mean, it doesn't really matter whether my unit is uh, the uh, uh, amount of charge of one particular electron or this number of electrons, it's still proportional to, to, to the number of electrons wherever you are. And that seems to be very natural considering electrons are the carrier of the electricity. However, when um, physicists first started actually thinking about measuring the, the electricity and uh, different um, actions related to electricity, like electric current, for instance, they went a different way to measure the electricity. Uh, primarily, it was related to the fact that at the time, they didn't really know everything we know about structure of the atom, about measuring uh, electrons, and etc., uh, etc. Et so, they did not have that apparatus. So, they had to really start measuring electric, um, uh, different electrical characteristics using something which they could measure using their experimental equipment, whatever they have at the time. So, together with any electric charge, obviously there is electric current, because whenever you are um, connecting negative, which has excess of electrons and positive, which has deficiency of electrons, electrons will fly, will flow, whatever, from one, uh, from the negative to, to the positive, um, positively uh, charged object. Now, what they could actually measure is the intensity of this flow, because the more intense the flow is, the more other characteristics are, um, can, can be measured around it, in particular magnetic characteristics. We will definitely talk about all these um, things in details when we will basically uh, talk about uh, electromagnetic properties, but at the time um, they could measure these magnetically related e effects and they could not measure the number of electrons or, any, or anything like that. So, as the main unit which they were using at that time, they were using the intensity of the current between negative and positive. And um, that they could actually measure by measuring the uh, certain magnetic attraction between two um, conductors. And at that time they came up with the unit of uh, intensity of the electric current called ampere. By the way, Coulomb is called um, and uh, after the physicist by the name Coulomb, and ampere is called after another phys physicist which is called ampere. So in any case, the intensity of the electric current was at the time measured and could have been used as the unit. And then what they were actually saying is that the electricity 
ch electric charge can be measured as if you have a current of one ampere which exists during one second so whatever the amount of electricity one ampere flow um, brings to another to to, to the opposite conductor um, during one second is one coulomb so one coulomb is one ampere times one second so ampere was a primary unit and the second obviously obvious is also a primary unit and the coulomb was a derived unit but then um, I think it was just uh, in 2019 um, the International Committee which is related to units of measurement uh, CSI System Internationale they have actually decided to do it slightly differently they have changed the definition of the Coulomb to this this is the definition basically Coulomb is such a measure of electric charge using which one electron has this particular um, charge expressed in Coulombs so that's kind of a historical perspective and again right now if this is the definition it seems much more natural so the definition of the unit of electric charge again we started from just amount in one electron which seems to be very natural but then it's too small and they have just decided to proportionally increase it to something like 10 to the 19th degree so our um, regular um, charges which we are dealing with can be expressed in like normal numbers not not such a huge ones so this is the story behind Coulomb now what I wanted to talk about this is uh, just to give you some kind of um, uh, feeling how big or how small Coulomb actually is well it's it's quite big actually I mean it, it's a it's rather big unit um, so let's just start from the example which I was using um, during the previous lecture now in the previous lecture if you remember I was using two cubic uh, two cubic centimeters of iron um, initially neutral but then I said okay let's consider that magically we took all electrons from here and transfer it there all electrons which are in one cubic centimeter of um, iron so one cubic centimeter well it's you know a little bit smaller than this one but it's really a small amount so if we transfer all, uh, all electrons and put these two um, pieces of iron on the distance of one meter and we were talking about how big attraction between these are I just called it this is like huge I mean these electrons which we are transferring from one object to another now this becomes negative this becomes positively um, charged and attraction the force of attraction is so strong that it's comparable to the strength of the force between the Sun and the Mars now let me just use very very similar example to demonstrate um, uh, something similar uh, with uh, um, with number of uh, coulombs uh, in in this particular charge. Now, instead of cubic centimeter, I will take cubic millimeter, which is really very very small, cubic millimeter of iron, and another cubic millimeter of iron. And again, I do exactly the same thing. I will transfer all electrons from one to another and I will put the distance between 100 meters so two cubic millimeters of iron with all electrons magically transferred from one to another so this becomes negative this becomes positive now on a distance of 100 meter attraction between them will be of the same strengths about the same strengths as the weight of two Egyptian pyramids in Giza so that's again huge now the question is how many uh, coulombs are in this particular transfer now I was calculating basically based on the 
size, one cubic millimeters, and weight, and whatever else. So I use certain resources which I have on the internet. I found how many um, um, electrons are. So it's 2.2 by 10 to the 21st degree. That's how many electrons are in one cubic millimeters. So I transfer them there. Now this is negative, this is positive. Now what is it in coulombs? Well, I know that this actually is the number of um, uh, electrons per coulomb and this is the charge of every uh, electron in coulombs, right? So if I will use this and I will multiply it by the number of electrons, I will have 2.2 times 1.6 and the 10 to 21 minus 19 so it would be approximately 3.5 times 10 to the second degree which is 350 coulombs so 350 coulombs which is well I don't know it the number seems to be normal right no, no big deal but if 350 coulombs, this is negative 350 coulombs, this is positive 350 coulombs, on a distance of 100 meters, the attraction force is comparable to the weight of two e Egyptian pyramids, gravity, which is, again, huge. So, as you see, 350 coulombs is a very, very big amount of electricity if concentrated in one particular place, obviously. Now, to have another kind of feeling about how much electricity go, go, goes from one place to another, when we do have some kind of a conductor between two different um, charged positive and negative um, poles, and, um, and here is what I can say as another example. If you take the regular incandescent lamp of 60 watt, which is kind of average for many, many lamps at home, and if you have a regular American electricity supplied uh, to the house, to the building, which is usually, let's say, 120 volts, and I'm not talking about what is volt, we will all be discussing this, but that's not the matter right now. What is a matter is that the uh, uh, current, electrical current, which is wattage divided by voltage, is 0 0.5 ampere. And as I was saying, ampere times one second is one coulomb. So, in one second, the amount of electricity going through the lamp is about, in one second, is about half of coulomb, right? One, uh, half of ampere times one second. So every second, half of a coulomb goes through the lamp. Now, um, so how many seconds do I need to accumulate, for instance, this amount of electricity, which is basically a huge as we know right well if if it's uh, half a coulomb um, uh, then in one second then we will have to have 700 seconds right so whatever it's like 12 minutes or something like this um, in about 11 12 minutes we will have amount of electricity which is going through uh, the electric lamp of this type of wattage um, approximately equal to this rel rel relatively huge amount of electricity which we have um, purely artificially decided to, to calculate if we will strip all the electrons uh, from cubical millimeter of iron and put it in into another one. So whenever the charge whenever the electrons are going through they are going with a very very uh, um, in, intense flow if you wish 
And this is, you know, pretty substantial. So we are consuming a lot of electricity, even in, in, in a simple um, incandescent lamp. All right, so um, what's the bottom line of this lecture? I think I was quite surprised myself when I found out this historical perspective of how we measure electricity. And something which seemed to be e extremely natural to basically measure the amount of electric charge in number of electrons or any other proportional uh, uh, unit was not really how it was done uh, from the historical perspective. And again, the, the reason is people did not know um, in the early days of electricity uh, all these uh, things which we know about atom, about electrons, about how to measure uh, such, such things as number of electrons, for instance, etc. So these are all contemporary developments which led to a much more natural definition of the unit of electric charge, which is Coulomb. And again, what's very important is to understand that Coulomb is a rather, rather big um, amount of electricity. And this is an example, these tiny one uh, cubic millimeter, which is really very, very small of iron, if you will take all these electrons, it's about 350 Coulomb altogether. Okay, um, that's it for uh, this particular lecture. The notes for the lecture contain a little bit more precise numbers about the amount of electricity in one newton. There are in one electron, because there are actually like, I don't remember, eight or nine, whatever digits after um, decimal point. But in any case, uh, approximately you can say that 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Tiny, very tiny. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.